so we make we make a lot about Palm Sunday, which is the sermon we had last Sunday. We make a little bit about Maundy Thursday and make a pretty big deal about Good Friday. And of course, we make a big deal about Easter, but not nearly big a deal enough. But we give almost no thought or time to Saturday. And the, the biblical authors at the time gave it almost no, no, no ink either. Uh, you, can, you can piece together about a half a dozen individual verses, maybe six or seven, that have anything to do with Saturday at all. And, and mostly it's about uh, the guards being stationed, the sealing of the tomb, uh, some with the spices and, and just little, little things like that. But Saturday has always struck me as unbelievably potent, very powerful to me. Saturday is a day that, man, if you're, if you're Peter, if you're John, if you're any of the, the 12, if you're any of the multitude, if you're any of the, the group of women who have followed Jesus around and, and participated in his ministry and bankrolled his ministry and uh, gave him places to stay, and if you're in the throngs that have followed, uh, especially now, that have now gathered rapidly after Lazarus. Or if you're the 12 or the three kind of inner circle, right, who have given up everything from the beginning, left your home, left your family, left your job, uh, had no place to lay your head, have followed Jesus everywhere in some, some pretty sketchy, dicey situations, because clearly they believed. Clearly, they believed, but as we've talked about, I don't think what Jesus came to do was going to look like what they thought it would. And so, thinking about those, I, after my rambling there, you've got these people who have given up everything, all these people who have followed Jesus, and then Friday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus is dead. The, the, the person that you put literally all your eggs in that one basket, you were certain this was it. The Messiah, the God-man, the God-King, the King of Israel, the promised one, the chosen one. And then he's dead on Friday at 3 o'clock. At 6 o'clock on Friday, he's, he's in a tomb. Saturday, the tomb is sealed. The stone is rolled over. There's a seal over it. There's guards watching it. And most of those disciples are in the upper room behind a locked door hiding out. Others have scattered, fled. Because if they could kill the one that they thought was coming to conquer and take over and turn the world on its head and ride the white horse after this cute little donkey thing that he was doing and throw the Romans out and rise the Jews to power and bring Israel to the forefront, if they could kill him, man, what have we been doing for these last three years? I think about the pain and the doubt the bewilderment, the, the, the gut-wrenching of Saturday. This, this lost day where the disciples, the followers, had to feel that the world had just stopped spinning on its axis. That everything had crumbled, and yet somehow everyone else seemed to be going around as if things were normal. Everything they had thought, everything they had literally bet their lives on, their family's lives on, their livelihood, their homes, their jobs, everything on was dead and buried. What they must have gone through on Saturday, what they must have thought on Saturday. I think we would be, I think we'd be shortchanging the story to think anything other than fear and doubt and dismay and depression and terror. Lots of soul searching, lots of questioning. I imagine there were lots of like, how, how did we miss this? How did we get this so wrong? What is happening? 
And what in the world do we do now? All day Saturday.